guys, today I've got a video that I've wanted to film for months and months but I've never had like the confidence to just put it out there and to be fair I still don't really have the confidence to but it's getting more to summer now and I'm getting more aware of the fact that if I don't do this video I'm not going to be able to wear what I want to wear like short sleeves and stuff which sounds ridiculous until you've heard what I've got to talk about but yeah I basically just want to film this video ugh, and kind of just get a weight off my shoulders and talk to you about a few things and please 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 watch this video to the end it's probably going to be quite long but I'd really appreciate it if you watched it to the end so that you like heard everything that I've got to say I'm really nervous in case you can't tell but today is the day where I'm going to talk to you about my weight loss journey and it does involve some things that you probably wouldn't think it would have involved if that makes any sense like I know a lot of people probably think that I worked out and ate super duper healthy and stuff to lose as much weight as I did I mean that is part of the case but it's not the whole story so oh, this is story time with Gabby <laughs> so when I was younger I never used to be big it was when I got to about the age of 11 or 12 I actually came on my period there so like puberty was starting and I just piled on weight I put on so much weight every year I would just get bigger and bigger and I'm gonna insert some pictures all the way through this video of the things that I'm talking about but yeah I would just get bigger and bigger and bigger and it became something that I was more and more paranoid about and I used to just like isolate myself from people because I was so self-conscious about how big I was but however much I personally tried to like eat healthy or go on diets which are so stupid I don't agree with diets at all I think that they can put something in your head that is very like constrict constrictive is that the word no that is definitely not the word something in your head that just makes you think more and more and more about your weight and then you get more down about it and I just think diets aren't a good way to go as I put on more and more weight I got very bullied and this happened for years it happened at the end of primary school and then moving on to secondary school basically the whole of my secondary school experience I was bullied people would come up to me and spit on me and call me a fat whale and they'd even tell me to kill myself and that I wasn't worth it in this world and I don't want to get all emotional in this video because I feel like that's something that I've had to deal with personally and I don't really want to go into it because this isn't a bullying video but I did get very very bullied so I'd got to a point in my life where I was doing everything I could to kind of avoid people I used to skive PE and not go to it because I was so self-conscious of my weight and my mum decided to refer me to a dietitian. So I saw this dietitian for about two years. She was really nice. She just tried like everything to help me. She worked with my weight and my BMI to come up with meal plans that would have been healthy for me to eat. And for a while I was okay like eating that stuff. But because I was so down within myself, I definitely did go through a massive bout of depression. And I was just so down and the only way to kind of comfort myself, I know a lot of people do this, was to eat. That was like my one thing, it was like I just felt like I was feeding my soul and putting happiness into my body just by eating. And that might sound ridiculous to some people but that's just how I felt. But by doing that it was making me more unhappy. So I found it really difficult to stick to the meal plans that I was given and I was still just putting on so much weight and it got to a point where I sat down with my dietitian and I was just so upset, I was crying and I didn't know what to do with my life as a whole basically and she decided to put me on diet pills. Now these were pills where if you ate three grams of fat in a meal, it would basically go through you and you would shit the fat out. Sorry to be disgusting, but that was it. It was like bright orange, it was disgusting. Um, so 
if you ate like a lot of a fatty meal, that's what would happen to you. And I was okay on them for a while. It definitely did stop me in fat because I was at college at this point and I didn't want to be running to the toilet all the time. I found it so embarrassing. So it did definitely help me. But again, that got to the point where I kind of ended up abusing those pills and I would not recommend them to anybody. Just from personal experience, it got to a point where I would have like four or five tablets in a row instead of just having one and then I would eat a fatty meal knowing that it would all just come out. That is not the way that you use them and I would not recommend that to anybody. That is the worst thing you can do. You can go through so many health issues from doing that and it's just not good. Anyway, so the dietitian that I was seeing could see that my mental health was going further and further downhill. I was getting more and more unhappy. I'm finding this really hard to talk about. I keep like, ugh, I don't know. I was getting more and more unhappy with who I was. I was seeing less and less people, like even to the point where my mum would ask if I wanted to go to the shop and I would be like, no. I started having panic attacks when I went places. I did have massive trouble with depression and self-harm, if I'm honest. I'm not going into that in this video either. But because of that, my dietitian could just see that I wasn't in a good frame of mind. I was not helping myself and my body. I was eating more and more. I was putting more weight on every time that I went to see her. And it got to the point where she referred me to a surgeon. Now, this was because I asked her to. I felt like, personally, that was the only thing that was going to help me. It got to a point where I just felt like I couldn't physically help myself. And if I didn't do something to get rid of this weight and get rid of how crap I was feeling, I don't think I would be here today, honestly. So I decided to go ahead and have an operation. And I would hand on heart say that this operation saved my life. It was the best thing that I've ever done. Um, so I sat down and spoke with a surgeon and he recommended all of like the weight loss operations that I could have had. We were talking through like gastric bands, gastric bypass. I just decided in my mind I wanted a gastric sleeve. This is basically where they cut a big portion of your stomach off and sew the rest together. So you end up with like a tiny little stomach and I had this when I was 18. I'm 21 now so it was like three years ago. I think it was in 2012 though that I had it and it was completely my decision to have this operation like no one else's decision. I had that operation and that was really difficult at first. It's not an easy operation to deal with. I couldn't even drink like that much I was living on literally about that much of a glassful, not even a bowl, of soup. Liter and literally that was all I was having a day, just because that's the operation made my stomach so small. And then obviously while I was healing, it was swollen up as well, so that made it even tinier. So I was eating so little and the weight dropped off me. I managed to lose eight stone, which is incredible. That's an incredible amount of weight. As I was losing weight, it all seemed to go off my top half. Like, my top half was the part where most of the weight went from. Obviously, a bit went from my thighs and my calves and my hips, but not that much in comparison to my top half. And my top half is a 12, but my bottom half then was a 16 to 18. And this is after my operation and after I'd lost a whole bunch of weight. So I went to see a surgeon about it because... I'll insert pictures here, you'll see like how bad it was around my hips. And the surgeon said that he could do this big operation on me, but back then I was like, no, I really don't want an operation. Like, I can get rid of this myself. So I started exercising, I started eating as healthy as I could and like as much as I could. Because eating now is still really difficult for me. Um, I might go over this in a different video. The gastric sleeve operation was the best thing that I've like ever done in with my entire life because it saved my life. But at the same time, it has come with a lot of bad things. I physically find it really difficult to eat a lot of food, as in a lot of types of food. I find it so difficult to eat vegetables. It just makes me sick. It just won't go down. It, it seems to be like crispy things that I can eat a lot of. But yeah, I might go over that in a vlog actually. I'm vlogging every day through April. So if you do have any questions about that, please leave them in the comments below and I'll try and do a day in my vlogs where I just sit and answer some questions. But back to what the surgeon said. He said he could do a big operation on me where he just like got rid of it all. But I was just like, no, I really want to try and do it myself. So I was eating healthier. I was exercising. 
and it just wouldn't go. There was just this like band of fat around me that just wouldn't go. So I ended up going to the doctors about it and they told me that it was something called lipedema. This is where huge amounts of fat will just settle somewhere and no matter what you do, no matter how much you exercise, how much you eat healthy, it literally just won't go. And my bottom half was still a size 16 compared to my top half which was now a 12. I went through a good year and a bit I'd say of dealing with my hips being as big as they were and my thighs. This is when I started YouTube actually so I was like hiding this throughout my YouTube start. Yeah, I was hiding the fact that my bottom half was so much bigger than my top half. I remember when I first met Zoe and I went to Brighton, I would wear this outfit. It was like a blue spotty top and a skirt and I would wear tights with my skirt and that's because I wore tights, like sucking Spanx tights, all the way up to my boobs. Um, and then I would wear Spanx on top of the tights to try and hold my hips in so that I would look like more normal or more of like a proportional weight. And I went through the entire summer wearing them. So like 30 degrees, I was in tights and Spanx on top and then either trousers or a skirt. I would just like sweat all day, but I just didn't want to not wear them because I was so embarrassed of it. So that went on for a good year and a bit. And then I finally decided to go and see another surgeon about it. And this was because I'd got myself into a place again where I was just so down about it. So I went to see a surgeon and he told me that he could do liposuction on my hips and I was like finally like something that's going to change them. If you didn't know I'll leave a research page about lipoedema below but liposuction is basically the only way that you can get rid of it. Exercise will do a little bit like it did with me, it got rid of a little bit of it but this huge amount of fat that had just settled there like nothing would have got rid of it except for liposuction. So in January 2015 I decided to have liposuction on my hips and like kind of the top of my thighs but it was mostly my hips. That operation went amazingly well, the results were incredible, I'll insert a before and after picture of that operation here. It went so 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 well, honestly I couldn't have like imagined any better results than what I got. I don't want to make all these operations seem like a walk in the park because they really weren't. In my first operation it was meant to be an overnight stay and I ended up staying in for about 10 days because after my operation every single time I sat up or stood up I would faint and pass out and the doctors didn't know what was going on so they took some of my blood to check it and I had really really severe anemia and like incredibly low haemoglobin. It got to the point, and I'm not being dramatic here, it got to the point where I could have died because it was that low so they decided to give me a blood transfusion so I had two pints of blood um, I did post about that on Instagram because that was that was terrifying for me. I didn't know like if I was actually going to make it from that because of how low it was and it just kept getting lower and lower and the doctors literally didn't know what was going on. So I did post about that on social media. Obviously I didn't post about the operation that I'd had but that was a big like downfall of my operation. My surgeon took six litres of fat from my hips and the average like with liposuction is like two litres so he took a hefty lot and because I can't physically eat and drink enough because of my stomach I couldn't put enough back into my body to like make me healthy again so I had the blood transfusion and I was still fainting but it wasn't as bad like it did go up a little bit the doctors wanted to give me another blood transfusion but I decided I don't know whether this was stupid or not but I decided that I just wanted to go home it had got, got to the point where I'd been in hospital for, for a lot of days and I honestly just wanted to go home I was getting really fed up so I decided not to take the second blood transfusion and to go home with a really massively heavy dose of iron and see how it went from there. Anyways, long story short, I got better from that but I now do have quite bad anemia. So that was the first operation. Three months after that, that's how long it takes to heal from an operation. Um, three months after that I decided to go ahead and have another operation. Now this one was on my stomach and this one wasn't caused by the lipedema but it was caused from me losing 
the amount of weight that I did lose. Eight stone is a lot of weight to lose. And I ended up with saggy skin all around my body. So I had it on my legs, my stomach and my arms. And my boobs went really saggy as well. But you guys know about my boob job now. <laughs> So I decided to go and see my surgeon and see if there was anything he could do about my stomach. I will insert a before and after photo here. But I did have an abdominoplasty in April. That is effectively a tummy tuck, but he got rid of so much skin. So yeah, this is my before and after with that one. As I've just touched on, I had a lot of saggy skin around my body. So I had it on my legs as well. And I also still had the lipedema in my thighs. So my next operation I had in August and this was a bilateral thigh lift. I've got it all written down on my phone. Basically they cut your legs open on the inside. It's like a long incision to, to your knee and they open it up um, do lipo in there to suck the fat out and then get the skin and cut some skin off and then with the rest of the skin sew it back together. Now this one did a lot for the front of my legs. I used to have like an overhanging knee of fat. That did a lot to solve that but it didn't really do anything to solve the back of my legs. But can I just say that operation was horrendous. Absolutely horrendous. I would not wish anybody to have that operation. My legs swelled up to the size of like three times what they were. I couldn't get in any clothes and the cuts were so big on my legs that they were just all the time like wanting to burst open. God, I'm getting emotional talking about this one because it was honestly horrible. Through that operation, I did somehow vlog because I just didn't want anyone to know. I was so embarrassed of like having this surgery that I didn't want anyone to know that I'd had it. So even though I couldn't physically walk, like I was in so much pain and I also got an infection in one of my legs. Even though that was going on, I still vlogged and I still posted my videos just because I didn't want anyone to like catch on to anything, I don't know. Anyway, long story short, that operation was freaking horrendous, absolutely horrendous. And yes, I've now got scars on the inside of my legs, which will fade. The scar on my stomach has faded to literally nothing. I'll insert a picture right here and I'll point an arrow to it because it is not like the red line that was from my pants. It's a tiny white line. That is all that's left of that, which is insane. <laughs> so after my leg operation, once that was healed, I wanted to tackle my boobs. And I've never been happy with my boobs since like the age of about 13. It was always something that I was going to have done regardless of of weight loss or anything it was always something that I was gonna have done so I decided to have a boob job I had a double mastopexy I think that's what it's called basically they cut around your nipple and they move it upwards because I had quite saggy boobs from losing all the weight they move it upwards insert implants and you're left with like an anchor scar under your boob however that's basically gone on me right now but what I didn't say at the time I actually vlogged through that process I actually had my arms done at the same time. So I had a mastopexy with implants and extended brachioplasty. Basically, I had really big bingo wings from losing all the weight, which I was always embarrassed about as well. So I decided to have them cut off, but it's now meant that you can probably see it here. I've got like big scars on my arms and this is the part that's kind of made me want to do this video. Even though I've now got rid of the problem that I had, I feel like I still can't wear like tops that I want to wear and I still can't wear clothes that I want to wear just in case people see these scars on my arms because obviously they're the most noticeable ones I'd say. They will fade a lot but as of right now they're still pretty like fresh. I had that operation in December so they haven't gone down a lot but I decided to have them done at the same time so I've got from the scar underneath my boob it goes all the way up my side under my armpit and along my arm and he cut the saggy skin off from that. These are the scars that I hate the most, I'd say. I just don't like them being there. Like if I was with someone, if I had like short sleeves on and I was to point at something, I know that people would just ask like, what's that, what's that? And I can't wait for them to just fade. Like I'm quite embarrassed about them, but I am happy that I had that operation still because I did have a lot of saggy skin on my arms. So after that operation, there was one left that I needed to have to kind of complete my body transformation, I guess. 
and that one was on my back. Believe it or not, I had this operation probably exactly a month ago as I'm posting this. Oh, it was on the 2nd of March. And this was a posterior abdominoplasty, which basically means a buttock lift. Now, because I'd got rid of the fat on my thighs and I got rid of my hips and I got rid of my stomach, I still did have a lot of lipedema on my back. I'll insert a picture now of me holding the fat. This is above my bum. So every time I sat down, I would have this huge like layer of fat that I couldn't physically get rid of. It was part of my lipedema band that went like around me. So that was the last thing that I wanted to tackle. So I had basically what I had done on my stomach on my back. They like joined the cut up. So they basically cut my back open, did a lot of lipo to get rid of the fat, cut off a huge chunk of skin and then sewed it, sewed it back up. So I'm still recovering from that now, which obviously nobody knows about. Um, I'm only a month after it and I've still got a part on my back that isn't healing. Um, it's not healed well at all, it's still quite open so I still am healing from that. There's a lot of people who give me a lot of shit for like not going out a lot but I've had over a year now full of massive operations and obviously because I've kept them hidden um, it might look like I never go out or whatever in my vlogs and stuff, but in reality it's because I've been recovering for literally like nine of them months. I've been in recovery from these operations and they were a massive, massive, massive thing to have. And I just feel like now I can finally get on with living my life and I think that's, that's why I wanted to do this video because I wanted it to be something that I'm not embarrassed about. Obviously not a lot of 21 year olds have to go through this, but hopefully it's just gonna make a massive difference in my life and kind of turn my life around. I don't wanna get emotional in this video because I don't want it to be, I really don't want it to be something that I feel embarrassed about, but that is everything that I've had surgery wise. I, paid for everything with my own money. I've saved and saved. That is what the majority of my money has gone on for the past year and a half. I've just been saving like crazy so I could pay for all these operations. But yeah, now I finally feel like it's just gonna be a huge weight lifted off my shoulders and it's gonna be something that makes me so much of a happier person. Obviously getting rid of all the fat doesn't get rid of like the fact that I need to tone up desperately. <laughs> I still need to exercise and work on my body and treat it right and eat healthy and do all these things but it's got rid of all the problems that I had with my body. I am going to leave a link to lipedema below because I didn't know about it for a long time and if you feel like you might be going through something similar I'll definitely leave a link below so you can see but I'd say definitely go and talk to your doctor about it if you do. But overall, I just want to say that there's always a way that you can help yourself. If you're upset about something, if you feel like there's nothing that's going to make you happy and there's no reason to be on this planet, there is always a way that you can help yourself. Obviously, 99% of people won't have the same thing that I've had to go through, but everybody's got their own problems and also I think I will have proved that you never know what someone is going through like me being a youtuber people often think that they know every single detail of my life but you really don't like you really really don't which goes for everybody else in the world as well you don't know what they're going through right now but there's always a way out there's always a way that you can help yourself to get happy if you're in the same position that I was in with depression please 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 try and speak to somebody and find a way to get out of it because if I didn't do that I genuinely don't think that I would be alive today. This has made such a huge impact on my life. I'm very grateful that I could have it done. Obviously it hasn't solved everything. There's stuff deep down, like mentally with me that I need to deal with, but it's solved a big part of the reason why I was so, so down. Thank you to all of you who will probably leave really nice comments and be supportive as you always are. I honestly appreciate it.
more than you would ever know. As I've said, I am doing daily vlogs in April over on my vlog channel, so I'll leave a link to that, but also feel free to ask questions in the comments. I will go over it in one of them days go over some questions that you might have. Thank you for all of your support with everything and hopefully we can all just strive for happiness because that's the most important thing in life. No matter what road you take to get there, that is the thing that is the most important to everybody. I'm gonna go now, but I guess I will see you in my vlogs or in my next video on this channel. Bye.